coming up on Greater Life Today with Pastor Netha D. Bell. He says, I don't need a nod of agreement. I just need you to understand our current situation. I know what I told you in the beginning of 2018. But you can't expect food from a supermarket if you don't ever go to the market. Jesus, you can't expect your refrigerator to be filled with food if you never go to the one that's Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. Hello, my name is Netha Bell. I am the pastor of the Greater Life Christian Center Church here in Philadelphia. I thank you for tuning in today. And before we go into the message, I just want to share my testimony on how I have arrived to be the pastor of this wonderful ministry. I know it will be a blessing. Amen. You're watching Greater Life Today with Pastor Netha D. Bell. was a call on me that I did not know. And I don't know that I heard a voice of a uh, opposing voice. His voice was very clear and I understood what he was saying. I had went through a season of fasting and praying and God had softly said to me, you have been faithful over a little and now I'm going to increase you. But I did not know what that meant because I was a minister. So at the time I thought it meant to be an evangelist and I would just continue to go to church, continue to minister, continue to serve. I never had an idea that it would be a pastor. First, I didn't even know what it meant when he said to be a pastor because I don't come from pastors. And then I never knew that he was going to actually require me to leave my home church, to leave my job, to leave my dreams, to leave my goals behind, and to follow him. So when I heard that voice, he had to speak to me. It wasn't immediately, it was a process. He came in and said, we're going to begin to change. And I remember one night he said, in the next two weeks, your life will change drastically. Within those two weeks, I got a package from my job. I was separated from my first career, and then came an offer to, from TD Bank to be a vice president. Six figures, humble beginning, who would not take that offer? And I took that offer. And I got there and I was there for a short period of time and God said, I'm, this is not what you're supposed to be doing, Peter. You're supposed to be fishing for men, not fishing for fish. And when he said that to me, he said, what if I told you to go into the office, put your badge down, put your laptop down and walk away from it? I said, the devil is a liar because God, you wouldn't tell me to do that. You know all my responsibilities. You know I have small children. You know I have health insurance that we need. This is not God telling me. That, but God will never allow us to be ambushed because he was setting me up to walk away from the position. And one day I was sitting in my office and I just got up and started packing my boxes. And I didn't even realize why I was packing my boxes. I just started packing my boxes, and it wasn't that day that I left. I, nobody asked me why I was packing my boxes. I didn't even realize that I was packing my boxes. And all of a sudden, a favor at the company just withdrew from me. I had a contract in front of me, and they were like, these are the demands, and this is what we want you to do. And God was saying, choose. Today I labor for you life and death. What are you going to do? And when that moment, I said, God, I'm just going to trust you blindly. And I walked out of there and I never looked back. Was it scary? The first two weeks, I'm used to having a structured environment. I'm used to working on things and God is saying, come into my presence. And I'm saying, come into your presence for what? To pray and sit and do nothing all day. But I learned the kingdom of God is not about work. It's about sitting in God's presence and allowing him to pour into me. But what he did was he groomed me. I believe at a point he had me 50% of the day being busy just to keep my spirit down and then the other 50% I had to sit and pray so that I would not lose my mind. I believe I went into a time of depression because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand where I was. I didn't understand why I had to give up everything and it seemed like everybody else got to keep everything. And just to step out, God, and to trust you. And I remember one time just laying in a fetal position and putting a blanket over me and just saying, allow this blanket to be your presence. Because outside of from under this blanket, I can't understand. I don't, I don't even know how to operate here. 
and he was there with me. And it was that quiet place that I learned his voice. I learned his comforting. And then he would give me assignments for the day, the, enough sense to get up and do assignments, to go out and look for a space. So what does this mean to be a pastor? And where do I go? And who's going to help me? And he said, I'm going to build a circle around you. These will be the ones that will help you build the church. And then I'll send resources, which will be people that are different than your circle. Your circle will be your Aaron and your her that will hold up your arms and build the church. But then I'll send resources in. And the distinct difference is a resource is a person that will come in, do a task, and leave. And he says, I do not need you to get your heart attached to resources because people will come and people will go. But what I want you to be uniquely different is to be a pastor or a shepherd that smells like your sheep. And what that meant was I could not just be ushered into service. I could just not be ushered out of service, but I had to be amongst the people. I had to feel their compassion. I had to feel their heartbeat. I had to be able to touch them and they had to be able to touch me. And even through these last five years, he constantly reminds me, I know it's not easy to be this type of pastor. I know it's not easy to pour into people constantly, but God is saying, this is what the body needs now. And I am a rewarder. I see everything you do and you have no idea what I have in store for you. And so now I look five years later and I'm like an onion. Each day he peels back more and more of me and I'm surprised to see what unfolds. So has it been scary? Some days do I cry? Some days do I wanna run? Some days do I have a joy, it's up and down, but one thing is for certain, he has never left me, he has never forsaken me, he is there with me, he counsels me, he walks with me, and I count everything that he does as a humble success, that I am just an instrument that he is using as a tool to minister to his people, to advance the kingdom. Today's message at the Greater Life Christian Center is entitled, Top Priorities. Our focus scripture comes out of the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 2 through 9, and it reads. Verse 2. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. The people are saying, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious, luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. You have planted much, but harvest little. You eat, but are not satisfied. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them through pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You hoped for rich harvests, but they were poor. When you brought your harvest home, I blew it away. Why? Because my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, while all of you are busy building your own fine houses. It is because of you that heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. The Spirit of the Lord says, I need you. When he says his house, in this sense, the text was talking about the temple of the Lord being built. But the Lord says, I'm talking about the temple you created within you for me. You've been so busy building your own dreams and priorities that my place in your heart lays in ruin. And you wonder why you never get enough. The Spirit of the Lord says you'll never have enough money because I'm the one that blows it away. Because you spend more time running after and building your earthly temples than you spend doing what's a priority to me. 
before I can bless another footstep, I need you to understand why you have not begun to reap what it is I've promised. You run after your own goals, and my place lays ruined and ruins, and then you want me to bless. And the Spirit of the Lord said, speak to the church and say, for the rest of this month, I need you to take prioritize. I need you to begin to prioritize. Somebody put down priorities. Priorities. What are my top priorities? Priorities. The Spirit of the Lord said, ain't none of y'all too busy. It's just a matter of prioritizing. When someone says to him, I'm too busy, God says, no, that's not a reflection of your schedule. It's a reflection of my slot on your schedule. Let me, let, me, let me speak again. God says, I know you say you're too busy to get up and pray. I know you say you're too busy to study the word. I know you say you're too busy to come to the church house. I know you say you're too busy. He says, I don't believe that you're too busy. It's not a reflection of your schedule. You don't lay me against your job schedule. Don't lay me against your schedule for getting sleep. Don't lay me against the laundry schedule. God says, no, 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 you're not that busy. When you tell me you're busy, it has nothing to do with calendar days. It has everything to do with where slot I rank on your list of things to do. And because I rank so low, I can't get the blessings you want to you because I'm not a priority to you. And so I'm asking you, before we go to the altar and begin to pray, I'm asking you to take a conscious effort to see where I fall amongst your priorities. I'm not asking you what's on your to-do list. I'm asking you what slot do I fall in because based on what slot I fall in is a direct reflection of you and our relationship. And as you draw nigh unto me, I draw nigh unto you. And if you never come to me, how can I ever give you anything? And you wonder why, as soon as you get something, it fades away from you. It's like sand. You pick it up and it runs out your hand. You can't work enough hours. Because you know what your priority is? Working out. And that's why I won't bless the fruit that comes from your hours. The only thing I'm going to bless is the time you spend with me. What's your priority? The Spirit of the Lord says, why is it that I'm not a priority to them? I'm simply an option, but they want their things and their desires to be a priority to me. He says, I'm not a priority to you. I'm an option. I'm optional. I'm optional to you. When you're doing good, there's no selection. When you're doing bad, you choose me. But yet and still, no matter where you are, you want me to make your situation a priority. He says, I don't need a nod of agreement. I just need you to understand our current situation. I know what I told you in the beginning of 2018. But you can't expect food from a supermarket if you don't ever go to the market. Jesus. You can't expect your refrigerator to be filled with food if you never go to the one that's Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. The moment you get it, he, you get it. He take it. And so the Lord said, speak to the house and talk about the priorities. Listen, here's my first thing I want to say. Don't confuse what appears to be urgent with being important. Y'all better write it down. God says, as you're making your list of priorities, please don't confuse what appears to be urgent as important. Somebody said, what in the world is the preacher talking about? You know the urgent 
midnight hour calls. You know the urgent, I need you to do it now. You know the urgent things that appear to be urgent. God says those things may appear to be urgent, but they're not as important as the time you spend with me. How is it that you take what appears to be urgent, put me to the side, and that take number one priority? He says, do not be deceived that what appears to be urgent is now important. The most important thing in your life is me. And the time you spend with me. The Spirit of the Lord said, how about I pull up your social media account next to your God spent time account? How about I spend a, pull up your job schedule time sheet and I put it up against the time sheet you spent with me? And I'm just wondering, how would you feel? Jesus, how would you feel if the shoe was on the other foot? God says there's no good thing I would keep from you. I told you my grace would be sufficient. I told you be careful of associating yourself. All you need is with me and you. But God says you got diverted with your own self-driven motives. And I'm asking you to be honest as you write down your priorities. I need you not They'll be confused by what appears to be urgent, by what's important. What do you mean? Do not let that thing that appears to be urgent take you away from spending your worship time with God. Somebody said, I got to get to work at this time. That's urgent because I got to make money. I got to make money to pay my bills. I got to pay my bills because if I don't pay my bills, I have nowhere to live. And God says what has that got to do with me? When you didn't have it, I provided. So how is it now that you have it? I'm not a priority. The second thing is God says as we get ready to cross over into the new year. If all your priorities are focused on what you think is best for you. When will you achieve what I think is best for you? The spirit of the Lord said. The Lord said, as you write your priorities down, if all we gonna do is write down what's important to you, when will you have any leftover time for what's important to me? Have you ever thought that I didn't bless what was important to you because it wasn't as important to me? Jesus, come on, come on Holy Ghost and speak to us. Speak to us, my hands aren't short. I just told you I'm not going to come down. I'm going to bring you up or we're going to be at a standstill. The Spirit of the Lord said, how that working out for you? Family, this is Pastor Bella of the Grand Life Christian Center located here in West Philadelphia. I am super excited. We have a big announcement because Christmas is two weeks away. You know we always do things here big for the kids at Greater Life. So I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Frank so he can give you all the details. Go ahead, Deacon. Yes, as the holiday season is upon us, God has continually been a blessing to the Greater Life Christian Center. As such, we want to be a blessing to you. So for this year, we are giving away 25 of these fantastic and wonderful bikes. We're asking 25 children ages 3 to 12 to post a one-minute video explaining why they deserve a bike and how it will be a blessing to them. We're going to pick 25 of heartfelt videos to get a bike this Sunday, December 23rd, following our 11 a.m. worship service here at 617 North 41st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We hope that you will attend our worship service. Okay, you heard it here first. Share it, invite, tag somebody. Let them know that the Greater Life Christian Center is giving away 25 bikes for Christmas. Now call up your kids, your grandkids, let them put a video together, post it to our Facebook page. We're gonna pick the best ones, the most heartfelt testimonies so that we can be a blessing to them. Amen. Hashtag GLCC, bless me with a bike, Tag and post to the Gray Light Christian Center Facebook page. God bless you. See you on Sunday. Let's go back into the sanctuary. Today's message is entitled Top Priorities. God says more importantly it is to worship and to seek after me. If you're so busy writing down and telling me what you want to do, I'm just wondering how in 24 hours 
Will you have any time to do what it is I ask of you? Mark 10, 31 says, many who are the greatest now will be the least important then. And those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. Meaning what? Always seek God for input first in every decision for the remainder of this month. Before any action, I need you to say, God, is this a priority to you? God, before I do what they ask, I need you to make clear to me, is this a priority to you? God, how does this align to my destiny? Because it was my destiny I asked you about. I didn't ask you for just as small as a promotion. How does this prioritize towards my destiny? How does this prioritize towards building up the assignment you have called me to do? If this does not prioritize and align with building up my family, building up the ministry which you called me, if it doesn't prioritize to what God has told me to get up and pray for my husband, why? Because that is a priority because God has assigned it to me. Priorities aren't always comfortable. Priorities require sacrifice because they are a priority. Because priorities assigned by God brings forth generational blessings. You, how could you see generational blessings and you ain't even seeing blessings here? Maybe your priorities are not in line. Text somebody and say, watch your priorities. Touch somebody else and say, be careful what you think is urgent. Because it may not be urgent to God. The last thing I want to say. As you get ready to reprioritize and make what's important to you forefront to the altar. As we come for communion and our time of communing with God and you write down on I wonder how many people wrote down on a blue piece of paper, my concern is my relationship with God. I didn't ask. How many? I just want you to look down at your blue paper. And God says, I wonder if I actually collected them. How many people would say that they're concerned about their relationship and their time and how they're distracted away from me as opposed to telling me about what their priority is? God said, as you look down at it, I wonder where I rank and what you listed. And maybe the true thing is that we need to work on a new list. Because as you put me first, seek first the kingdom of God, then everything else will be added unto um, You seek first the kingdom of God. I'll give you your heart's desires. But you can't bring the desires without first giving me your heart. Somebody said, how many times I got to do it? Every second on every second. Because every second comes to steal his spot. Life comes to steal his spot. Trials and tribulations. I come to tell you, still the spot. I know it's just not you. As we get ready to pray, the heart of this ministry, you greater life, let me tell you what the heart of this ministry has went through just this year, just this month. On Monday morning, I got a call, hollering across the phone. Pastor, I need you. My mother's in ICU, and they want me to make a decision. I got another call, Pastor, we need you to come down to Hahnemann Hospital. I'm going in for emergency surgery. Y'all, I don't even know I was sick. As we get ready to pray, I said, 
God said, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. I said, Lord, I'm praying for them all. I'm going to the hospitals. I'm at the doors. I'm sitting in the meetings. I'm journeying with them. And God says, you can do all of that. But if I'm not first, you can go to every hospital. If I'm not, you can send all the text messages. But if I'm not first, you just a temporary fix. Because if they're not emotionally connected to me, it will not sustain them. The Spirit of the Lord said, it ain't that they not uh, want to be attached to me. It's that they ain't found a place for me yet. And even those that have a place for me, sometimes it gets dull. And all I'm asking you is to refresh your Love for me. What does it look like, Pastor? What do I have to do? Let the Holy Ghost do it. I got to show up here. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to shine a rose. You got to say, mm -mm. He said, no third voices. Just me and you. And I have a need of your time. And any wisdom you lack, I give it to you generously. And so as we get ready to pray, our first foundational prayer is, Lord, let us prioritize you as first. Before anything, before we ask for anything, I ask that you would examine our hearts, that you would examine our minds, and that I would humbly sit aside all of my requests and ask you, Holy Ghost, to teach me not just my fingers for war, but teach me how to incline my heart to seek after you before I seek after even my own thoughts. This is Pastor Bell, and it's about that time for us to get ready to go, but we would love to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If you are looking for quality child care, a state licensed facility in the West Philadelphia area, we are here for you. We're open Monday through Friday. We accept CCIS. We provide all meals and snacks, and we even offer before and after school care. You no longer have to worry about how to get your child back and forth to quality child care. While space lasts, call the church for more information at 215-222-GLCC. Bell is the senior pastor and founder of the Greater Life Christian Center Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She is a dynamic preacher and teacher. To have her visit your church for speaking engagements, please call the number below on the screen. We welcome you to join us for one of our worship services, Sundays at 11 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. at our Philadelphia location. For more information about the ministry, visit our website, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. And you can even join us on our YouTube channel. Experience the difference at the Greater Life Christian Center Church.